Brooks, I want to welcome you to the Heavy Brand Podcast, Detroit's Youth Sports Podcast. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. No doubt. The pleasure is actually mine being a fellow uh, CT alum. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> CT. Uh, so back today, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, Coach uh, Coach Wilkes, give us a little intro um, as far as um, growing up and, and your introduction into a beautiful sport of track and field. Okay. Okay. I'll make a I'll make a long story short. Um, but I'm actually an Ohio native, Columbus, Ohio, born and raised. Um, so I went to a high school called Pickerington Central. Um, it's a little outside of Columbus, suburb, suburbs of Columbus. Um, so that's where I got my start. And then accumulated a lot of accolades there. End up getting a scholarship to University of Detroit Mercy, uh, where I ran there all four years. And after I was, I was deciding, do I want to go home, back to Ohio? Do I want to stay in Detroit? And fortunately, I met my husband <laughs> there. So he was on the track team as well. So he pretty much made my decision. So um, I stayed there, ended up getting a full-time job. We got married. Um, but it was like a year or so out of track. And I was like, that itch started coming back. I'm like, I'm missing it. I'm missing it. I'm not, you know, I'm not working. I'm, I'm literally just laying around. I'm like, I'm missing the track. So I, um, I end up, my first coaching position was um, at the Detroit Charter School called Detroit Leadership Academy. It was a new program I don't think they ever had track before. So it was really a rewarding experience. Um, and I was there about a whole season, two seasons actually. And then I ended up um, getting pregnant, planned. <laughs> okay, I got pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so I had to take a little break. So it was about maybe like a year and a half off. And then I got that itch again. And I ended up um, being a hurdle coach at a DPS school for about a year. Um, and then I got the call to be a head coach at CT, and the rest is history. So that's where I'm at now. <laughs> um, you made a lot of good choices. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give that to God because <laughs> everything Amen. I don't know, mm -hmm. I'll give, give that my, myself that credit. <laughs> you know, and I may be a, a bit biased because you know I attended CAS, um, I ran track at CAS. Um, uh, for a couple of years. Um, okay. So, I mean, growing up in the Midwest, you know, there's a lot of similarities, like in the Midwest area. Um, how was your high school experience as a student athlete? My high school, honestly, my high school experience is what led me to my love and passion of coaching. I had an amazing, amazing coach, Coach Glasgow, I don't know if you're watching, but he really taught me track. It wasn't just like, go out and run 200s. Like, I, I, I was that athlete, even that student, I always asked questions. So he was that person, it'd be 11 o'clock at night, I'm like, um, why did we do that workout today? So he was the one that really kind of um, gave me that, that push and that edge that I needed. So, and then I was all state all four years. So just having that success and, and having a coach that really cared about me on and off the track, it was amazing. So my high school experience was absolutely um, that, that's what got my start. It was amazing. Had a great time. Um, and like I said, I accumulated accolades, but not, I didn't win states. So that was one thing to this day that I'm still like, I wish, you know, but uh, it was, it was a great overall experience. Okay. okay. Um, I know, you know, for me, um, Cass Tech wasn't actually um, like my high school, the high school that I thought I was going to go to because my older siblings, <laughs> they all went to uh, this Catholic high school right outside of Detroit in Redford. And so I thought I was headed there like my siblings, join my uh, teammates, continue playing ball, end up going to Cass Tech. And it was like a huge culture shock as far as Catholic school, K through 12, everybody knew each other, moms, cousins, aunties. Yeah. And, you know, and then Cass, it was like, you know, 3,000 plus kids, eight or nine floors, um, you know, even graduation day, like I saw people on the podium, you know, that I hadn't seen all four years. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and then, I, 
I can agree with that because it was a culture shock for myself. One, I went to a small high school, small college. I went to cast. I think I got lost for the first first two weeks every day. I had to call my athletes like, where am I right now? North or South interest? So I definitely agree with you saying. I got you for sure. That's a culture uh-huh. shock in itself. Yeah. Um. So now, who who are your biggest influences besides your uh, besides your coach? Who was like your your main role model? Who my main role model? You know, I'm gonna be cliche, but I gotta go with my parents. Um, that they, they like they gave me my start. They are the ones. They were the ones pushing me. They were the ones challenging me. Um, actually, I don't know if you know, but our hashtag, our our motto when we break is shock the world, and my dad, I don't know if people know that, I didn't really tell a lot of people, but my dad was actually the person, my first me, I was like eight years old, and I was really nervous, I was going to throw, I'm like shaking, and he just, he was in the bleachers and kind of leaned down, just like, go shock the world, and I was like eight years old, and since then, every meet, he's literally said that same phrase, shock the world, shock the world, so I just took that and ran with it with my team, but those two really, um, they were just so supportive, and I'm, I'm sure you know how much time and money and, and sacrifices go into AU sports and sports in general and they just never miss the beat. I mean whatever I needed, new spikes, massages, whatever, they were they were on it. So they really um although they didn't run, my dad was a basketball player. He was a uh, top tier basketball player, went D one. My mom was a softball player. So they didn't really know the track life. But they were they, they figured it out quick because I would talk to them. We watched film it was a lot. So they were, they were my role models. They were my role models. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, you know, the, that's the main thing that had me come up with this youth podcast. You know, growing up, my mom and dad were role models. Uh, my dad had mm-hmm. been like a lawyer in Africa, came to America, mm-hmm. had to go through law school all over again. Um, same college as you, uh, you would be Mercy, actually. Sure. Cool. Cool. Um, so I grew up with role models in my life, but some of the kids that I grew up with, the neighborhood in Detroit I grew up with was uh, Brightmoor, and Brightmoor mm, okay. is a real yeah. rough area. And yeah. you know, some of, some of the kids in my neighborhood didn't really have role models. So with this podcast, I want to make sure that you know each guest is someone I know for a fact is a positive role model for the youth to inspire them. So absolutely, absolutely, they shock the world. Shock the world. There you go. <laughs> Damn. Um, so uh, as far as like most memorable teaching moment, I don't like to use like your biggest failure. I don't like to use that term, but like what's your most memorable teaching moment so far? Man, my most memorable teaching moment. You know what? I have so many. So I'm going to give you the most recent one. Actually happened last week. And it, it, it was something that honestly I had to unpack when I got home because it was it was heavy. So I have an athlete, um, and, and you know, sports, in any sport, it's 99% mental, right? Yes. Not, or 90% mental, 10% physical. So if you're not here mentally, then, then you might as well not even stop, step to the line. So I had an athlete. She is probably one of our top athletes, but she stands in the way of herself. And it's that mind. Like, she could literally, she could, she could, she could do, do damage, right? But she just, she kind of like, she's not really confident. So we were working on that. So anyway, um, last week, I, it, we go from like our fastest group to our slowest group. Or our slowest, but that need more work. Um, so our first group, she's usually in. Um, but she was just, she wasn't having that just wasn't a good day she was just getting last and all our workouts all our reps and i'm like she usually blowing people out or can blow people out um but she just was getting last getting last so i'm like okay go to third group which is our which is the group that needs a little bit more work she looked okay. at me she looked at me like i was crazy I and mean, she's like third group i said yeah go to third group and so she gets to third group blew them out had the her time was faster than the time in the first groups and she looked at me she was like and I'm like you just went whatever you was faster than everybody on this track right now and she looked at me I'm like go back in the first group let me see something she went back in the first group blew them out but she wasn't doing all practice so it kind of it was heavy at the moment because I'm like it really showed me just how much 
the mental plays a part and how much confidence plays a part, you know, because she knew she was going to beat the third group. But in the first group, for some reason, she just, she, I don't know, some mental thing. So when I kind of moved that around, it, it, it just clicked. It clicked, clicked for her. So that was the most recent. I know I have a lot more, but that was the most recent that was kind of heavy on my heart. It just showed me how we, I mean, we can teach the physical all day, but if we don't teach the mental, then, then it's nothing. It's nothing. So. Yes. Um, I'm glad you shared that. I know, um, one of my recent guests, uh, he's from the Detroit area. He played his high school ball uh, at Mumford. And he was one of the top top 10 ranked uh, high school basketball players coming out the PSL in like the early 90s. And he started off at like a big college, Minnesota, and ended up bouncing around. And I asked him the same question, you know, so the youth could kind of learn from it. Mm -hmm. And I knew his background. And I said, uh, you know, I asked him, what was your most, um, you know, your biggest teaching moment? And he said yeah. for him, he wished he would have stayed at St. Martin de Porres. And when he transferred from St. Martin de Porres, he transferred out to Mumford. Martin de Porres was more structured and he would have picked up better habits. So mm -hmm. Mumford at that time, by the time he got to college, he had a lot of bad habits. And that's what really kind of stopped them from making making the NBA pretty much. So wow. I'm glad you shared that with the young people. Yeah, absolutely. Um, as far as like your your talents and, and, and your passions outside of track and field, you know, no matter what our profession is, we always got whether it's a side hustle or something that we like to do on the side. For me, is doing is doing comic books. What's your uh, what's your hidden talent or passion? Hidden talent or passion. So right now, I think I'm doing my passion with the coaching. But my hidden talent, this is funny, actually. Nobody ever believes me. But I, in high school, I was an elite weightlifter. Like, I was literally deadlifting, squatting. I was 115 in high school, and I, I think I deadlift 295. I was squatting, right. like, yeah, I don't know where that strength came from, but I just had that hidden talent, and I actually was training. I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, Westside Barbell. He's a um, his name is um, Louis Simmons, and he's like a big time weightlifter, whatever. Well, I was training with him, and he was pushing me to become like an Olympic weightlifter, but I wouldn't do it. I'm like, I can't leave track. But yeah, that's so that's my hidden talent. Now, I mean, I'm strong, but not anywhere near where I was. I'm gonna say that, but I'm still pretty strong. <laughs> I mean, um, you know, you stand out as far as like a high school coach that's still in great shape. I know when I was at Cavs, my track coach was uh, Coach Wiltshire, and I know he coaches football. I think he still coaches football now. Yeah, yeah, he coaches track. Oh, he still. Oh, he's that's still my mentor. Track? Yeah, that's what my wow. mentor. Yeah. He the, he's now, over the boys. I'm over the girls. So okay. Uh -huh. now, if you can hear this now, like um, I definitely want to send him a, a late apology. <laughs> I didn't know how accomplished this man was. It didn't occur to me that, oh, man, this dude is in great shape at practice. He's keeping up with us. Like, I didn't know he held a lot of high school track and field records till like, years later when Google was, you know, Google was a thing. When I was coming up, Google wasn't really an uh, uh, option. But, yeah, right. learn, take care of your body. Uh, that's good for the, for the players. As you're te taking them through stick drills, you know, they probably want to know, can you do some of these drills too? So <laughs> they challenge me all the time. Listen, if if I don't do a movement, they like, why don't you come out here and do it? They they challenge uh -huh. me. So after I had my baby, I had to get in shape really quick because I already know. Um, when I was a hurdle coach last year, the girl used to make me go over hurdles, and I probably at that time didn't go over hurdles in like three, four years. I'm like, let me put on these shoes. Let me just show them something because they ain't going to keep testing me. So I definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. I try to get out there as much as I can with the girls for sure. Okay. Um, now, this this comes uh, a, a difficult part of this episode where we're probably going to cover uh, – some parts that haven't been covered too often as far as, you know, COVID-19. As a high school coach, what challenges do you anticipate as far as being able to do your job at the same time support your young athletes during these times? Yeah, and honestly, this is a conversation I have with my staff almost every day. Um, but, I mean, it's the fear of the unknown right now. So, I, 
I right now, all we can do is is train. All we can do is just kind of go day by day. But I think my biggest thing right now is praying. I mean, I want to, of course, the safety, and I want to make sure that's in place first. But I, and I guess I'm being a little biased. But I really want a season, and more so, not I don't care about me, but a lot of my seniors, my juniors, they're really trying to get recruited, and that's the biggest thing. And if we don't have meets, we can't put down times. And recruiters, I mean, they're looking at times at the end of the day. I can talk up an athlete as much as I can, but if they can't have, you know, they don't have that proof, then I can't I really do much. So that's my biggest thing right now is just praying, praying, praying that we do have a season where we can showcase our hard work because these girls been working since we kind of got the opening and the okay to go ahead and train. These girls have put their foot on the pedal and haven't um, let up. So I really want to see that hard work come to fruition and, and be able to run. Like, that's my biggest thing. I just want to run. Right. Okay. And I see, I see that hunger. As a former student athlete, checking out some of the uh, the footage, like they're not playing around. They they're serious. They're not messing around at all. So. They're serious, yeah. Now, um, where do you see this this current state of track and field in the U.S. versus like our top competitor, like Jamaica? Give me the, the <laughs> raw, uncut, the, the unedited version. The raw. So you know what's funny? I follow professional track, but not to the extent that you would think being a being a high school track coach. But I'm always gonna root for <laughs> I'm always gonna root for USA. I think I will say um I think the difference, I think it was like a some statistic came out where US or women, I know for sure women athletes in the US, their peak point is not until like 30, 35, whereas Jamaica is a little younger. So I've been seeing like Justin Gatlin, Carmelita Je mm -hmm. Jeter. I know yeah. she's um, retired now, but they're 35, 40 in, in winning in, in with great times. So I think that's kind of encouragement for the young people. Noah, uh, Noah, what's his name? What's his name? I don't know. But some of our um, young people coming on, it's like they're coming on so young they're still, they still haven't hit their peak. So I think that just speaks volumes and what we can do as a country. I mean, if we're not hitting our peak until another 10 years, they got 10 years of experience to still go. So I think we're looking good. I think we're looking good. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. I, I, I agree. Um, I know Justin Gallen got some great, great patches in his hair. So I know he's, he's pushing close to 40 by I now. I think he's 38. I think he's 38. He just yeah. got second, and there was um, a meet last week. He got second with a 9-9, nine, nine, I think. I mean, and that's with, you know, without really crazy training. So that's what I'm saying. Like, we're looking pretty good, for sure, for sure. Um, now, I wonder how, you know, with, with COVID-19 kind of slowing down training, I wonder how that's going to affect the times, because for a while, people's times getting faster and faster and faster yeah. Now, yeah how do you think that's gonna look like maybe one or two years from now you know what i can, i don't even know i'm gonna just be i don't even know um i mean our new normal this is our new normal so i think i will say we are resilient and um i think we'll adjust and i think yeah it might it might take us a step back at, and i'm saying that as the track community in the whole I think it's going to take us a step back, but I do think, like I said, we're resilient. We'll figure it out. And, it, and I think that just like how I'm doing my team, we're using it as an advantage uh, rather than thinking of it as like, oh, this is just going to be a, a, a setback. We're really thinking like, okay, it's a setback, but it's a setup for a comeback. So I don't know, but I'm thinking we're going we're gonna to come out on top for sure. Still gonna shock the world either way. So. We gonna shock the world, and that's everybody. We all gonna shock the world. Track community, sports community. We gonna shock the world. We gonna come back stronger for sure. Now, for you know, for the young ladies that you know, they're almost about to get to high school. They want to run track at like a big program like a Cast Tech. What advice would you have for them to get them ready for high school, elite high school level uh, track programs like Cast Tech? to get them ready. You know what? 
don't worry about the physical piece. That's my advice. Let me handle that. You worry about coming in mentally focused, confident, consistent, and ready to work hard. And that's the coach's job. The coach's job is to develop those athletes. It's not their, you know, our job is to raw talent, develop, um, even if you're an average runner, to develop into those elite athletes. But we can't teach hard work. We can't teach consistency. We can't teach um, being resilient. We can't teach all those things, being a hard worker, none of that. So my biggest advice, if you're eighth grade, seventh grade, and you're like, oh, I want to be a cast tag, but they're so, no. Come in with confidence come in ready to work and then we'll build you up to that we'll build you up to that so that's my biggest advice just be mentally prepared okay and and the success piece you know with hard work the dictionary i used to hear the dictionary is the only place where success comes before <laughs> hard work absolutely, work. absolutely. <laughs> now, yep. tell us a little bit about your courageous track club yeah so courageous and you know it's interesting because as big as a program Cast Tech is, there's never been an AU team that was attached. So there's a lot of um, schools. I know like Oak Park, for instance, they pretty much have like a motor track club. Right, yeah. right. So they're attached. And then there's other schools like that. And I'm like, so when I got on board, I'm like, Cast don't have that. Like, so they're not running all year round, which is a disadvantage, right? When other teams are running all year round, we only got that spring season. So one thing with well, Wiltshire, when he brought me on, that was something that we, we were brainstorming. I'm like, we have to have an AU team because the only way to run indoor is under AU team, not you can't run under your school. So that was like one of my biggest things coming in. I wanted to make sure that we secured the AU team. So birth, courageous. And courageous, um, it's 99% cast tech. So I really – focusing on like building a legacy and really being able to develop not only on the track but develop um the morale amongst the team so courageous is something that we're still in the works with but we really had a great 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 indoor season that was i think only we had like 35 athletes only two out of 35 athletes ran indoor track before so it was a new experience for them and they definitely rose they rose to the occasion um our state meet, we had, I think, five different events, five different events um, placed in the top 10 in the state. So, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we did, we had a lot of PR. It was just, it was an amazing stuff. So it's slowly, we're, we're going against teams that's been doing it for <laughs> 20, 30, you know, Mother City been around. You said, did you say? For, you forever. Know? It's been forever. So we're going against these big squads. We year one. So it's different, um, but we're, we're coming along very well. We're coming along, we're garnering a lot of athletes, and I think it's an attraction to see that the track team is all year round. So Courageous Track Club, we, we coming. We coming, for right. sure. Now, um, share a little info. Uh, I just pulled up the little share screen. I see. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about the fundraiser. How, how can we help? Yes, yes, yes. So July 25th, we actually um, – this was – Detroit Body Garage, Tara Kasher, she is the owner of Detroit Body Garage, and Patty Dukes, who's a fitness guru in Detroit. They actually, without my knowledge, came together like, how can we help Courageous, which is huge because they're such an influential, um, two influential people in Detroit fitness, and they're just our biggest allies and our biggest advocates. And they came together, approached me like, hey, can we do a fundraiser for y'all? I'm like, absolutely so um they put together this fundraiser it's a hip-hop fundraiser so patty dukes will be giving like little dance thing they can do um it's from 9 to 10 july 25th which is not next saturday but the saturday after we'll also have like a lemonade stand fresh homemade lemonade um and then we'll have a bunch of track gear track accessories that we'll be selling as well so it's just gonna be a fun time and then you'll meet, be able to meet the creative team. Um, and it's just going to be fun. It's going to be fun. In, the, in my bio, I think it's the link where you can sign up. You can donate. If you can't attend, um, you can donate or you can um, just come get your ticket, pre-register pre and get your ticket. So it's going to be a fun time. It's going to be a fun time for sure. 
But yeah, any any little thing, a dollar would help us because you know a lot of seeds are associated with AU track. So this is giving us a kickstart to our indoor season, um, being able to solidify some some money. Yep. Now for the bio, what's your tag name for those that are not familiar? Yeah, so my Instagram, and I'm pretty much predominantly on Instagram, is Coach Jazz, Coach J A Z Z thirty three. Thirty three. Okay. Yep, thirty three. That's my Instagram. Excellent. Now you know with, you know with your multiple tasks and 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 you know, um, got the newborn, got the married life, you got the the athletes to take care of, student athletes. Yes. Um, what are you doing for self care? That's big. That's big. That's big. So it's interesting that you asked me that. We have a, um, an empowerment coach on our staff, and she's really big into mindfulness. Um, and she does the meditations with the with our student athletes before a big race. Like she's all in her name. Her Instagram name is the Care 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 mm, Hold on. I'll I'll, I'll write it in the comments because I can't think oh, of yeah. it. But her name is Charisma. Um, and what she does is amazing. So when I'm feeling overwhelmed or when I just need a second, I call her up and we do a guided meditation. Um, and it's just amazing. And then I, another thing I do, I take breaks. I take breaks. Um, I have an amazing, amazing, and I might be biased saying this, but I think our coaching staff is the best in the, in the country. So I'm able to take a day if I need a day and they can handle it. Uh, we have captains that can just, you know, handle the team. So when I'm feeling overwhelmed, I'm, I got to cook dinner, I got a presentation to do at work, and also I got to get a workout in, I, I'm like, you know what, let me prioritize. And my family's always first. And after that, I'm like, okay, if I can't make practice, I can't make practice. Because if I come into practice, um, scatterbrain and my energy's low, then it affects my athletes. So I'm like, you know what, I'd rather take a step back, clear my head, pray, meditate, do what I need to do, and then come back fresh, ready, ready to coach, because they need my energy. They need my energy to thrive. So um, that's my biggest thing. I pray, I, I take deep breaths, and I, I meditate, and I just take a step back when needed. Excellent, excellent. Um, I mean, we can all, you know, take tips from each other, uh, whether we're co-workers or, or friends. It's always good to kind of trying to pick each other's brain to see what is so-and-so doing for self-care? Maybe I could yeah. try this. So, yeah. um, Now, um, on a lighter note, okay. which actress will play Jasmine Wilkes in the movie <laughs> and why? In your life story movie and why? That's, to, okay, let me think. Oh, okay. An actress. You know, I'm going to have to go with Kiki Palmer. And I say that because I bring a lot of passion to, to my uh, practice, to my athletes, to everything I do when it comes to track. Like, that's my, that's my key word is passion. I think Kiki okay. can portray that passion that I have. I mean, I'm a little feisty, and I think she got the feistiness. <laughs> My athletes just say I'm a little, I'm a little crazy, but I think she could portray my whole demeanor from the from the caring but passionate, sassy coach. I think she'll nail it down, and she's young, and you know, I think I think she got it. Beautiful. <laughs> um, I like that actually. Um, so, um, I mean, with coaching, you want a passionate coach, you know, especially yeah. at the high school level. Maybe not always necessarily on the college level, but especially at the high school level because teenagers are trying to find themselves. They need somebody to pick them up when they're going through it. So um, passion is definitely uh, a needed trait for a high school coach. Um, now, moving forward, what is your five-year outlook like? Where, where does Coach Jazz see herself five years from now? Five years. I'll be – early 30s um oh wow <laughs> i know <laughs> i know um got time on your side <laughs> thank god for that you know what honestly five years from now i see myself because what i'm doing i well i'll say this my career my passion my hobbies it all revolves around youth and not just youth but black youth so i always and that's always gonna be the forefront of everything i do in life so five years, I still see my 
see myself a, a advocate for black youth um absolutely see myself coaching at CAS um but I now see myself really really starting to create this legacy at CAS I know um it, it's one of the most respected decorated track programs um I think the last few years it fell off a little bit but my goal in five years to be contending for a state title and, and i'm gonna put it out there um because i think not only are we building these these youth up physically but we're building them up mentally and that goes a long way and i'm very big on development so you bring me an average runner that has hard work i'm gonna take her to the next level or him in that in that matter so five years from now definitely still advocate for my black youth um and and really being one of the top tier programs, courageous and cast tech in the state. That's it. Excellent. Um, Coach Jazz, uh, it was a pleasure having you on. Um, you know, I get a lot of flack sometimes from um, <laughs> some of my viewers. You know, they're like, you know, you don't get enough people, you know, from the city on your podcast. You have people in New York, California, different parts of Africa. You know, where's the, where's the city at? So, right, um, right. And I'm glad it has somebody coaching my alma mater and uh, putting on for the school, putting on for the city. Thank you for uh, coming on the podcast. Coach. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And let me give a shout out real quick, because you know I got to give them shameless plugs. Um, I really wanted to just take a second, shout out my coaching staff, because without them, th there's no there's no program, period. Um, they are they are my, they got my back on everything. So Coach Jules, he's our strength conditioning coach. Um, Coach K, she's our distance and field event coach. And then we have a team mom who just keeps it all together with all the crazy hotels, bus, all that stuff. She does all the administrative work. So we're small, but we're mighty, but we're mighty. So I appreciate um, all my coaching staff, all my athletes and parents. I love y'all. Excellent. And one last thing before you go, uh, to all the young people watching the show, um, I got a, a lot of viewers out in Ghana, my homeland. They're like four hours ahead. Uh, I was also want to add for all you young athletes, you know, that's going through, you know, whatever situation you're going through, try to stay, try to stay on your sports teams. Don't quit because when I quit the track team at CAS to this day, oh, that's geez. like my biggest uh, learning moment, my biggest teacher movement. So don't give up, stay at it. And, uh, Confide in your coaches, y'all. Salute. See ya.